in our previous video, we've already taken a look at some of the key questions which you need to be asking yourself when you're looking at a visual text for the first time. In this video, we're going to be really extending on that basic level of analysis by looking at the sophisticated techniques which you need to interpret those questions to that high level the markers are expecting. So when we're looking at techniques for analysing visual techniques, it's really important that you get a good understanding of these techniques because you probably do have a good understanding of language techniques. Most of the texts you look at in English are going to be language texts rather than um, visual texts. So you will probably have that really solid grasp However, to analyse images, you need to understand the elements of an image and that's a whole new area of study and we're going to be looking at those techniques specifically in this video. Techniques help you to deconstruct the image and see the importance of things you might not have noticed before. So now we're going to be taking a look at some specific techniques which are used in images to give them the qualities that you can apply to your analysis. So the first idea is directional terms. Now these are terms which you can use as terminology to add sophistication to your response. Firstly is the idea of layout. Now layout is the way in which images or text blocks are arranged on a page in relation to each other. So how things are set out and formatted. You may also like to talk about the composition and where the eye is led. So how the different elements of the image compose um, a greater image and also how this contributes to your eye being directed to looking at specific places. This is useful for book covers, magazines and advertisements. So we're going to be looking at these sort of techniques in a bit more detail. Directional terms also relate to the idea of um, background, foreground and middle ground. Now this is in relation to what part of the image you're directing the reader towards. So the background is the furthest distance away and often what's least important. So in this image, the mountains in the background are nice to look at, but they're not the focus of the image. It's not what the image is there to show you. The midground is the middle of the image if the image were 3D. So it's kind of what isn't right in front of you, but also not what's too far away. It can be what your eye is drawn to because it's the centre of the page, but it's not as important as what is closest to you. That thing that is closest to you is called the foreground. The foreground is the front of the image and is often the focus point for the viewer. So things being emphasised to place here. Often as well, this is where the characters are going to be placed in an image. So the humans are going to be in the foreground where they're involved in the action and they can use things like dialogue. If, for example, the humans were up the back of an image and were speaking to each other, it wouldn't have that same effect because they wouldn't be connecting to the audience. So by placing them in the foreground of an image, the audience gets that greater sense of communion.